Hello history lovers and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do something a little bit different. At the time of recording this it's the 19th of November 2023 and yesterday on channel 4 we saw a new documentary by Philippa Langley as she tried to prove new evidence I guess about the fact that the princes in the tower were not murdered by King Richard III and she's trying to prove what actually did happen to them. And today I thought I'd just give you a quick insight into my thoughts on the documentary. So the documentary stars Philippa Langley as she goes through with loads of evidence and tries to prove her point. And she takes along Rob Rinder, also known as Judge Rinder, with her. He's basically the UK version of Judge Judy for the Americans. And she essentially tries to persuade him and he's acting like as the sceptic. And it's almost like, oh, if I could get Rob Rinder to believe this, then you should all believe it. However, Philippa, you need to back up a bit because I watched that documentary. And although I feel like she made some good points in certain areas, I'm still not convinced. So Philippa's main argument was the fact that there's evidence abroad not in the UK because King Henry VII basically got rid of all of that documentation and evidence and destroyed it and she went abroad and she says that there's evidence abroad in Europe to suggest that the pretenders Lambert Simnel and Perkin Warbeck were actually King Edward V and Richard Duke of York, the two sons of King Edward IV and Queen Elizabeth Woodville. My first issue with that is the fact that Lambert Simnel claimed to be Edward Earl of Warwick, the son of George, Duke of Clarence. He never claimed to be King Edward V. And she doesn't really address this like she does. There is one historian who goes, oh, it's always thought that it was Edward Earl of Warwick. But that's kind of it. There was nothing to say, oh, we know it was the Earl of Warwick because blah, blah, blah. Or we know it's not the Earl of Warwick because of blah blah blah. It's just a case of, this is what we always thought, but I'm telling you it might be this. So that in itself wasn't really a compelling argument to change my mind. That and the fact that obviously for both Warbeck and Simnel, we do actually know roughly when they were born, where, and a little bit of pre-attempt to claim the throne. My other issue with this documentary is I feel like that Philippa makes a lot of assumptions and, you know, like I feel like she doesn't back up her arguments too well and I appreciate that, you know, the girl's got a book that she wants to plug so if you want a better argument then I'm sure she's going to be like, we'll just buy the book and it'll be in there. I feel like it is a biased account because of the fact that she wants the book to be sold and also the fact that it is well known that Philippa is a Ricardian. You know, anything that's going to paint Richard III in a better light, I feel like she's going to do. There is a report by Sir Thomas More on the prince's death. She obviously debunks that, if you like, and I appreciate that that was written 50 years after the boy's disappearance, and that More obviously had some sort of agenda as King Henry the Seventh, no Eighth, sorry, King Henry the Eighth was on the throne. So I appreciate it's not necessarily the most reliable source. So the first document that she finds is in the department at Lille's in France, and it's a receipt basically. It's a piece of accounting documentation written in medieval French for weapons used in 1487 um, in the Yorkist invasion of England. The document states that the arms are for the son of King Edward IV. She assumes that this refers to Edward V, as it states in the document expelled from his dominion or my dominion, something like that, referring to the fact he's been expelled from England. And the document also mentions Madame the Dowager, which is obviously Margaret of Burgundy, who would be Edward's aunt. And the general gist of this receipt is the fact that it's a transaction of trying to get troops to aid in the invasion. Now, the invasion at this time was the Battle of Stoke, um, and it involved the 10-year-old Lambert Simnel, who she is suggesting was actually King Edward. 
Now, Philippa believes that this imposter story was made up by King Henry VII to cover up the fact that Edward V had returned to reclaim the throne. So whereas we know that this is Lambert Simnel, she believes that Tudor propaganda was actually using Simnel as a cover-up of the fact that he was actually Edward V. I do have a slight issue with this. Like I wasn't completely sold because if Lambert Simnel was claiming to be an Edward, whether it was Earl of Warwick or the Fifth, like he was still, you know, convincing people. And also the fact that Elizabeth of York would have seen these pretenders at some point, right? She would have been able to have gone, yeah, that's my brother, you know? I, I recognise him. She was the eldest of the York children, so she would have had pretty good recollection of her brothers she would have grown up with them so why didn't she go oh my god Edward you know it just it doesn't it doesn't really fit with that and also Henry VII reversed Elizabeth's bastardization or made her a legal heir of the throne again I don't think he would have done that if he did not believe the boys were dead why would you put your throne at risk by reverting something that isn't going to benefit you. He didn't have to marry Elizabeth. That was just a very wise choice. And I don't feel like she addresses any of that in the documentary. So then there's another document found in the Gelders archive in Holland, which is written in the first person, and it seems to be documenting the life of Richard, Duke of York, the younger prince. So it was written in Middle Dutch and it's believed that it wasn't by Richard's own hand but it was by a scribe but it also has a detailed account of his escape from the Tower of London and it names courtiers, um, I think it was Henry Percy or Thomas Percy, one of them is named and it also refers to Margaret of Burgundy as dear aunt and it's also suggested that he spent some time in France and Portugal before taken to Ireland for the secret coronation. And here we're talking about Perkin Warbeck. There was another piece of evidence found in Austria um, and a document from Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian's court in 1493, which outlined why they believed that Warbeck really was Richard. This was because of three distinct birthmarks that he had on his eye, his mouth and his thigh, which again, I'm not really too sure how, unless it was documented in a way that we don't have now, I don't see how that is actual evidence because how would anybody know that he had those distinct birthmarks for them to check against? That I could just walk in and claim, oh, I've got a birth birthmark on my elbow. I'm now the new Queen of England. How how can they verify that Richard actually had those three? Like I said, there might be a document out there that I haven't seen that was written when he was born, something like that. But for me, I don't feel like that's compelling evidence. There was also a fourth document found in Dresden, Germany, which is a charter pledging 3,000, no sorry, 30,000 florins from Richard, now as an adult, to Duke Albert of Saxony for his help in an invasion to overthrow the English monarchy and he promised that he would pay the florins back over three months once he had gained the throne. Now, I've got to say, when I saw this piece of documentation, I was like, okay, I feel like I believe this because she showed the seal and it did have the royal seal and it had an R in it and it had his coats of arms of that of England. And like, although she has not convinced me with the Lambert Simnel stuff, what I can say is the fact that I believe, coming from this documentary, that Richard, Duke of York, was not killed in the tower. I actually think he did escape. I think he went to go live with his aunt Margaret because in her palace that the documentary also showed us, she had a room which was called Richard's room. So I think he might have gone and stayed there with her. And I do think that this document potentially was drawn up. Do I believe that he was actually Perkin Warbeck? No. So I still think the pretenders are separate. I think Richard might have escaped. I don't believe that Edward escaped. I mean, he might have done, but he definitely, in my mind, was not Lambert Simnel. However, I am more inclined to believe the Warbeck side of it over the Simnel because, obviously, Warbeck, or Richard, if you want to call him that, did have the support of Margaret, Maximilian, and King James IV of Scotland. 
And you could suggest that maybe this is because they knew who he was, maybe. Um, And I think they were saying in the documentary as well that he was allowed to walk around free when he wasn't in the Tower of London. He didn't have to hold anybody's hand. Um, He was given, like, his own tailor. Like, he was given all of these privileges that somebody of royal blood would have if they were imprisoned rather than being treated as a usurper or a common prisoner or somebody even committing treason. He was just treated very strangely compared to everybody else. So Langley says in the documentary that she became convinced that the boys were alive after she realised that King Henry VII was searching for them. And she does make a very valid point. Um, like, why would you search for someone if you thought they were dead? You know, and I think, I think that's a fair enough point. I remember when I was watching the documentary, I think my instant reaction was, well, you're searching for them to double check. But again, for me, I feel like I feel like what Philippa has uncovered in Europe is very good evidence. I think it's quite compelling and I think it actually gives us more food for thought. Has it completely changed my opinion on what happened? No, but I do now think that actually Richard Duke of York might have survived. I've already said this a little bit and I know I'm rambling a little bit so I'm going to try and wrap this up but I do think that the pretenders were two separate people still. I still don't really know what happened to Edward. I still think it was more likely that he was killed but there's arguments for and against that. But having watched that documentary I do now think that Richard Duke of York I think he did escape and I think he did go and live with his Aunt Margaret in Burgundy. I still think that this is going to be one of history's just biggest cold cases, conundrums, mysteries, whatever you want to call it. And unfortunately, it doesn't matter how much new or compelling evidence that historians claim to uncover, we're not going to know 100% what happened. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed my little conversation, rambling about my thoughts on this documentary. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. It's on Channel 4, so you can watch it on 4 On Demand. Um, It was quite a good watch, actually. And go make your own opinions. I mean, like I said, this is my opinion, so please don't let me sway you in any way. Um, And it'd be interesting to see if you have seen the documentary and if you believe anything different. But as always, guys, uh, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day.